Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanjena Tasmai Shri Varve Namaha Namam Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nervisesha Shanyavadi Paschachadesha Tarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Kadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we're hearing about the travels of a cowherd boy from Govardhan named Gop Kumar, who had a powerful mantra by which he could travel into the spiritual world. So, with the power of his mantra, he entered into Vaikuntha, and from Vaikuntha, he went to Dwarka, which is an extension of Vaikuntha. And in Dwarka, he met with Narada Muni as well as uh, Uddhava. So Narada Muni could understand that Gop Kumar was not fully satisfied in, in this Dwarka. And Narada Muni began to tell him about the glories of Gokula and about the Lord's special abode called Goloka. So Gokumar had traveled from one region to another, gradually coming to higher places. He'd gone, first of all, into the Brahma Jyoti, the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, and from the impersonal Brahma Jyoti, he entered into the Vaikuntha planets. And from Vaikuntha, he, he, although he had met the Lord there, but still he was not fully satisfied there. He was always thinking about Madan Mo, Madan Gopal. He was remembering all the intimate pastimes which he was having with Madan Gopal and Gok and Go Gokula. So when he came to Dwarka, Narada Muni began to Narada Muni is omniscient, he could understand 
the thinking of Gokumar that he was not fully satisfied. Although he'd come to the spiritual world and although he was in Dwarka and he had met the Supreme Lord, Lord Dwarkadish, Lord Krishna in Dwarka is called Dwarkadish, but still he was not fully satisfied. So Narada Muni was telling him about Goloka and how Goloka and Gokula are non different. Goloka being the planet the supreme planet of the Lord in the spiritual world and Gokula being the place on the earth planet. So he was telling him, Narada Muni was telling him about the different people who, the, the, about the devotees who live there in Go, Goloka and in Gokula, of course. And he was talk, telling him about the wonderful devotion of the gopis. And then Narada Muni also began to describe about how Akrura, who was Krishna's uncle, and Krishna's uncle from the father from the father's side, and how Akrura had come there to Vrindavan to bring Krishna from Vrindavan to Mathura. So Narada Muni was describing Akrura's thought of his, his state of mind as he came to Vrindavan to bring to get Krishna. And Akrura was describing that when I get to Vrindavan, I will fall at the feet of Lord Krishna and Lord Krishna will place his lotus hand on my head. And then this, just by the touch of Lord Krishna's lotus hand on my head, will remove all fear, takes all fear away from everyone who takes shelter of him. So Akrura is going, Narada Muni is describing Akrura, what Akrura is thinking, and Akrura is describing how Krishna gives gives everything to his devotee whatever the devotee wants krishna will provide for him yeah, and Krishna will give it his own self to those devotees who are fully surrendered to him. Krishna 
So Akrur gives an example. He said, just like Bali Maharaj became, he got the position of Indra, the king of heaven, because he gave charity to, he gave, he made an offering to Lord Krishna. Because when when Bali Maharaj was uh, the king of the demons, Bali Maharaj is the king of the demons, and he led the demons to defeat the demigods, and they conquered the heavenly planets. Bali Maharaj, so when Bali Maharaj was king of heaven, Lord Vamanadev came and asked for charity. And Bali Maharaj gave him charity. So, in this way, Bali Maharaj made his life successful. And then he mentions also about uh, a, a great sage who is in, described in the Ramayana, his name is Vishwamitra. And Vishwamitra also made offering to the Lord. And Vishwamitra had taught Lord Rama different mantras and teachings of the Shastra. And, and Lord Rama, at one point Lord Rama was living in the forest, so at that time he'd also gone to Vishwamitra's ashram. And while he was in the ashram, Vishwamitra had given him nice hospitality, he'd received him and given him nice food. So in this way, Vishwamitra became just like just like Indra's prominent among the demigods, Vishwamitra became prominent among the sages. He became respected by everyone. Then Akrura gives another example about those devotees who were blessed with the touch of Lord Krishna's hand, he talks about the gopis. Yeah, the gopis had been dancing Rasa Lila with Krishna. And so then when they were dancing, they were they were working, they were very, uh, they were endeavouring greatly to please Krishna by their singing and by their dancing and they would, they would sweat, they would perspire and Krishna would put his hands on their face. Mm, 
脸颊上流淌下来。Krishna 就用他的莲手莲花手抹去了孟留姑娘脸颊上的汗水。And just by the touch of Lord Krishna's hand on their face, then the gopis would become cool, and they become they they forget about their tiredness or their exhaustion. So just from the touch of Lord Krishna's hand, the the gopis became very happy, the great great happiness. But the beauty and the the charm of Krishna's touch. Can only be appreciated by devotees. If 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 you're not if you're not on the same if without being like a gopi, you won't be able to appreciate fully the nature of Krishna's beauty. So Narada Muni is giving different examples of these different devotees and how they all appreciate the position of the gopis and the mood of the gopis in serving Krishna. So next example Narada Muni gives is going to speak about Bhishma, grandfather Bhishma, who is the grandfather of the Kurus and the Pandavas. So Bhishma, Bhishma was his whole life. He was a brahmachari. He took a vow. He would never marry. So at the time of his leaving the body, he was praising Lord Krishna, and at the same time, he told about the position of the gopis. So it's it's really wonderful that a krura a krura could appreciate the gopis, but it's even more surprising that Bhishma could appreciate the gopis. Because Bhishma, he, he, he's a, a brahmachari, a total celibacy his whole life. But how would he know about these these young girls? But before he left his body, he was talking about these gopis and how. They're wonderful devotees of Krishna. But 
Bhishma had been, he, he, he was a, a Kshatriya and he was always taking battle, he was in many battles and he even had to fight with his own guru, Parashuram. And Parasurama had told him to get married and Bhishma said, no, I've made a vow, I'm not going to marry. And so they had to fight and, pa and Bhishma satisfied Parasurama, his guru could not defeat him. And Bhishma also fought against Arjuna in the battle of Kurukshetra. He came and he fired many arrows into the body of Krishna. But Bhishma considers the gopis to be so advanced. So if Bhishma recognizes the gopis, they really must be greatly must be great devotees. At the time of Bish Bhishma was laying on his bed of arrows and he was surrounded by many devotees, the Pandavas had come, Maharaj Yudhisthira, Lord Krishna, they'd all come to see the departure of Bhishma from this world. Maharaj Yudhisthira was feeling very guilty because so many people had died in the battle of Kurukshetra and he was feeling responsible. So he, Krishna brought him to Grandfather Bhishma to get spiritual knowledge. So Bhishma, at the final moments before he left the body, he prays that his mind could be fixed on Lord Krishna. And he says, Lord Krishna would different his different movements and his different smiles were all to honor the gopis of Vrindavan. And the gopis, they're, they're always in ecstasy remembering the activities of Krishna. So Krishna always gave special favor to the gopis and that, that favor of one of the favors was there by his dancing Rasa Lila with them. So the gopis are considered to be the, the, the greatest devotees even greater than Mahalakshmi. Mahalakshmi. 
Lakshmi. And we, we see when, when Krishna was going to dance Rasa Leela with the gopis, at one point Krishna disappeared from all the gopis and the gopis became, the, 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 they became almost blind when Krishna disappeared. They could not see anymore. They, 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 and they became like in a trance and they were remembering Krishna's pastimes about how he picked up Govardhan Hill and they were remembering other pastimes of Krishna. And they began to remember all the different qualities of Lord Krishna. And they were and they were just thinking about Krishna in all of his different dealings with them. And so the the mood of the gopis is greatest in their feeling when at the time when they're separate from Krishna, when Krishna is away from them then the love for Krishna is greatly increased that they feel very strong attachment to him. So, Krishna is worshipped by many different demigods like Brahma and great yogis like the four Kumaras and Narada, they all worship Krishna, but they all appreciate the gopis. So the, go the gopis are considered the greatest of all the Vaishnavas and they simply, the, their only desire is to give service to Krishna. So Bhishma was with, in ecstasy at the time of leaving the body. He was remembering about these gopis and how they had served Krishna. And Bhishma prayed how Lord Krishna could be present before him at the time. And he was, Krishna was present right before Bhishma at the time of leaving the body. And then Narada Muni gives another example about, talks about the ladies, the ladies in the city of Hastinapur, how they also appreciated the gopis. And 
Krishna had come to Hastinapur and he was getting ready to go back to Dwarka. So the ladies of Hastinapur, they were all watching Krishna from, their, from, the, from the, the rooftops, from the roof of their houses. They would stand on the roof of the house and they could look down and they could see Krishna getting ready to leave, to go to Dwarka. So Bhishma, Grandfather Bhishma, he was a very learned person, he was very well educated, so we could understand that he would be able to know about the glories of the gopis. But it's surprising that the ladies of Hastinapur, you know, because the ladies usually they didn't get much education, but they also they will also want to glorify the gopis. So these ladies, they're on the roof of their houses and they're absorbed in the thought of the qualities of Lord Krishna. So these, the, these ladies who are on the rooftop in Hastinapur, they offer these prayers to Krishna and these prayers are more attractive than the Vedas. So this, because these ladies are from Hastinapur, and so they're connected with Maharaj Yudhisthira, so they have some understanding about Lord Krishna. Yeah, but the, the, the surprising thing is that Krishna is leaving them. He's leaving Hastinapur to go to Dwarka, but even then still they're glorifying Krishna. Although Krishna is leaving them to go some other place, but still they want to glorify Krishna. And the, these ladies of Hastinapur, they, they, their prayers and their prayers, they say that, oh, just, they say, just think about Lord Krishna's wives, that he's accepted their hand, he's taken them as his wife, that they must have done many pious activities, they must have taken bath in many holy places, they must have performed many sacrifices in order to get the Lord as their husband. Bosha Fortune. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
because as they're, they're the wives of Krishna, and so they will taste the also, the, they will, sometimes Krishna will kiss them and they will enjoy the, the taste of Krishna's lips. And so the gopis, they would faint just to think about these kind of things happen. It would cause them to faint. So Lord Krishna's wives, you know, they're very fortunate because they, Krishna took them as his queens. So they must have had some very special piety. But the gopis of Vrindavan, they're even greater than these queens, because these gopis, they always think about Krishna within their heart. So this is the special love which the gopis have for Krishna, which make them greater, they're, they're even greater than Krishna's queens like Rukmini and his other wives. So the gopis have the privilege of tating, tasting that nectar from Lord Krishna. And just by thinking about Krishna, they would become bewildered and sometimes they would faint. So, we can go to Goloka, you can go to Goloka even, you, you don't have to be a gopi, you can be like Mother Yashoda, or like Nanda Maharaj, or like the other people of Vrindavan. Um, but it's mainly by following the mood of the gopis that we get that perfection, that we can actually enter into that Goloka Vrindavan. The, the mood of the gopis is the ultimate, the most attractive. So, Narada Muni, he, he, he wants to, he stops here because he, he doesn't want to make, he doesn't want to uh, remind all the pure devotees about how Krishna left the gopis, how Krishna left Vrindavan and how he broke the hearts of the gopis. He doesn't want to tell this to the pure devotees because it's too painful to them. So Narada Muni embraced Gopkumar and as he was embracing Gopkumar 
he, he, there were tears coming from his eyes and his body was trembling and his hair was standing on end. Narada Muni wanted to speak more, but he, he would bite his tongue so that he couldn't speak because he didn't want to keep talking. So he, he, he took him, to stop himself from talking more, he bit his tongue. And he danced in ecstasy and he showed many different other symptoms of ecstasy. But he was afraid that he would become too ecstatic and he would lose control, so he decided he better stop. Even though he was in, he was with Gop Kumar in Uddhava, he rolled on the ground and he jumped about and shouted like a madman. But very quickly he came back to normal state of consciousness and he could see Gop Kumar. He could see that Gop Kumar was not so happy, a little discouraged. Gop Kumar was worried that maybe it would be difficult for him to get to this stage, to become so ecstatic. So Narada Muni is going to speak to him more. So Narada Muni tells Gop Kumar, he said, you know, this subject should always be kept private. You shouldn't speak about this amongst people who are not devotees. It only should be spoken with devotees. And we should never speak about these pastimes in places where Krishna's opulence is being displayed. Where Krishna is where Krishna's being worshipped in opulence. Because remember, Krishna Narada Muni had been speaking about Goloka and about the, glo about the position of the gopis. So this is very different from the, op the Krishna in Vaikuntha and Krishna with opulence. Narada Muni is talking about Krishna Narada Muni said, said, that's why, he said, when I met you in Vaikuntha, I didn't tell you about these things. Narada Muni said, 
But now we're here in Dwarka, I'm telling you a little. And because they're in Uddhava's house, Uddhava's house, Uddhava knows about Vrindavan, so Narada Muni could speak about Vrindavan there in the presence of Uddhava. So Narada Muni t says that, he said, I can tell you that, that the place, the abode of the Lord, Goloka, it's the most difficult place to go to. And what you have to do to get there is also very difficult. Actually, what you have to do, you have to live in Brajabhumi, you have to live in Vrindavan on earth. So Narada Muni says, uh, not far away from here is another holy place. It's Purushottam Shetra. It's a place where the Lord appears as Lord Jagannath. So Lord Jagannath also he also has his place in Vaikuntha. And Nar uh, Gop Kumar had already visited there. He'd already gone to Jagannath Puri. He went to this place when he was on earth. They'd gone there. But Narada Muni tells them there's also this Jagannath Puri, this place of Lord Jagannath here in Vaikuntha, and it will be good for you to go there. And Lord Jagannath, along with his brother and sister, Balaram and Subhadra, they, they, they have the same pastimes which they did in Govardhan and in Vrindavan forest on, uh, on the banks of the Yamuna. They're doing the same things there. So Lord Jagannath is Krishna himself, and so Krishna is having his pastimes, and all the, the same pastimes. Hmm. So Gop Kumar could see all Krishna's pastimes there at Puri, in Jagannath Puri. The nature of Lord Jagannath is that whatever form the devotee likes, then Lord Jagannath reveals himself in that way. Because Lord Krishna is Lord Jagannath, and Lord Krishna is the source of all of the different incarnations. They all come from Him. 
迦曼那特，他是所有化身之源，所有化身都源于他。So, whatever form Gop Kumar wants to see the Lord, Lord Jagannath can reveal himself that way to Gop Kumar. Right, Gop Kumar has his his mind. He's very attracted to Madan Gopal. Which is a special form of Krishna. So Jagannath can reveal that form to him. So this Purushottam Shetra. Is very dear to Lord Krishna, just like Mathura, just like Mathura Dam Vrindavan Dam is dear to Krishna. So also is Pur, Pur, the place of Lord Jagannath, Purushottam Shetra. And there, Krishna also shows his his opulence to his devotees, and he also appears like an ordinary person of the world. And Narada Muni tells Gop Kumar that this Jagannath Puri is not different from Vrindavan, and Krishna shows all of his same qualities which he shows in Vrindavan. He shows them there also in Jagannath Puri. It is, it is said, Krishna is very kind to his devotees, and all of the devotees who live in Jagannath Puri, they get liberation in different ways. One one way they get liberated is by remembering him. Another way is simply by eating the remnants of the Lord's prasada. Or if you go there as a pilgrimage, if you go there, a pilgrimage means to visit the holy places. Or chant the holy names of Lord Jagannath. Or you go and live in that place. You may want to leave the body there. Some people go there to leave the body. But simply by seeing Lord Jagannath, you can get liberated. So, Lord, the same Lord who creates the universe is present there in Jagannath Puri in the, a wooden form, as Daru Murti. Right? The wooden, the Lord Krishna in the wooden form is called Daru Murti. And so, Krishna enjoys in Puri, and he enjoys the same way in Vrindavan. So everything you would see in, in Vrindavan, you can see in Puri. Krishna 
And so Narada Muni tells Gop Kumar, he said, if, you, if you're still not satisfied after going there and seeing Lord Jagannath, then at least stay there for some time. Of course, Gokumar's goal is to get pure love for the lotus feet of Krishna. He wants to develop the mood of the Vrindavan, the land of Vrindavan. That's the, the ultimate goal. Right? That means to get that is to follow in the mood of the gopis. But the cause of that love for Krishna is Krishna's mercy. And some, for some people, they may get it spontaneously, and someone else, they may have to do a gradual practice of bhakti. Then Narada Muni gives another example. He says, just like some people, they, they want some food. So somebody, they may get food which is already cooked. And other people, they may just get the ingredients and they cook it themselves. So there's different ways of getting Krishna's mercy. One may get Krishna's mercy spontaneously and another person may get it, they make it by doing all the different practices, following all the principles and doing everything good, doing proper sadhana. Just like brahmanas, some brahmanas, they will only eat what they cook themselves. They won't take food cooked by others. Because whatever they cook, they will offer it to their own deity. So they won't eat food cooked by other people. So the same way some devotees, we need to get purified from material contamination by doing sadhana. Yeah, we cannot expect to go directly into spontaneous loving service of Krishna. Yeah, we have to go, we have to do the sadhana, follow the principles, do everything carefully, gradually we become qualified for Krishna's mercy. So we have to go through, we have to get rid of the different obstacles on the path of devotion. Obstacles like we have fear, you know, we're 
we have fear of something going to go wrong. Yeah, we should we want to be able to think of Krishna like a friend, just like in the ordinary world you have a friend and you think of your friend. So if a devotee is serious about following in the footsteps of the gopis, he will think oh it's a very long way, very far away, a long path, I have a lot to do. So in the beginning he has many material desires, but gradually, gradually he gives up these, he loses his desires. So our real spiritual life begins when we get free from all these material desires. So, and, and, and until, he gets, until we can get rid of all the obstacles, all the different obstacles on the path of devotion, then it, it's difficult for us to develop that love for Krishna. So, in the beginning, we, we're, we're just, uh, we're very respectful and we have great uh, fear that we may do something wrong. So that's not real love. But when we develop the intimacy, more intimate relationship with Krishna, then there will not be so much fear and there won't be so much uh, respect. And we, we become more like a friend with the Lord and it becomes a more friendly relationship. When develop, we get a sense, sometimes we may develop a sense of possessing or owning something in relation to, to the Lord. We just think of the Lord as the only thing we we want, the only thing we love. So that is actually devotion. So we develop that love by, one way is by meditating, by always remembering these different activities of pastimes of the Lord, and the other way is by singing about the many pastimes of the Lord. Mm, um, 
冥想、冥想主的这些消失光，或者是记忆主的这些活动，或者是歌颂主的这些消失光。So we have to do the the sadhana, beginning with hearing and chanting and remembering, and this way we get we be gradually develop love for Krishna. We And by doing also nam sankirtan, by doing kirtan, singing the, about the Lord's different names and pastimes, then this helps us to awaken love for Krishna. We and just by doing sankirtan, we can easily understand the glory of Krishna, know also his pleasure, get have some connection with Krishna's pleasure potency. Okay, we will stop. Are there any questions? Yes, this, this is the point which was made that the gopis are always thinking of Krishna. That they're always feeling, remembering the association of Krishna and they're thinking about the touch of Krishna and being with Krishna. But Krishna's wives, they're with Krishna. And so they don't feel the same separation as the gopis. Gopis worship Krishna in separation, and that worship in separation is greater than the worship of Krishna's wives who are with Krishna. So Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, she's also with, she's always with the Lord. She's there massaging him or on his chest. She's with him, serving him. 
But the gopis are feeling separation from Krishna, and that separation is, they're greatly absorbed in love for Krishna, more than those who are with Krishna. So that feeling of separation increases the attachment to Krishna and Krishna appreciates that feeling more than the feeling of those devotees who are with him. Krishna is actually with the gopis, he's in their hearts because they're always remembering him. So this, the worship of the gopis and their mood of separation is considered the greatest, greater than any of the other devotees. Yeah, the mood of the gopis, the mood of the gopis is called, in Sanskrit is called vipla, vipralamba seva. It means service in separation. So all the devotees headed by Lord Chaitanya and all of his associates, they all cultivate this mood of the gopis to serve Krishna in separation. And they say, when, when is Krishna coming? Where is Krishna? When is he coming? And they're running around Vrindavan looking, where is Krishna? Is he by the Govardhan hill or is he by the banks of the Yamuna? This is their ecstasy. So this is why all, all these devotees, we were mentioning Akrura and Bhishma, they all glorify the gopis, that they're the greatest lovers of Krishna. The Shruti. Okay, this is Siba who asked this question, huh? Yeah, yes. Yeah, she, I just gave her the name. <laughs> Shruti Rupa, right? Shruti. Yeah. 
So her spiritual name is Shruti Rupa. So Shruti means the four Vedas, the original Vedas, which come from the Lord. Right? The four Vedas, the Rig Veda, Sama Veda, Yajur Veda, Atharva Veda. They're the four Vedas. They're called Shruti. The Vedas are divided into two branches. One branch is Shruti and the other branch is Smriti. So Shruti refers to the four Vedas. So Shruti means, Shruti refers to the hearing process, but the Smriti refers to the remembering process. Some, there are some people, like uh, we, we would call them Vedantists, they only accept the Shruti, they don't accept Smriti. So, Bhagavad Gita is Smriti, and the Srimad Bhagavatam is also Smriti. So when we preach to such people, we have to be careful, we have to present evidence based on the Shruti. Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam begun, belong to Smriti. Now, there's a chapter in the tenth canto, which is there also in the Krishna book. I think it's chapter number 89. It's prayers by the personified Vedas. So the prayers by the personified Vedas, uh, these, these are personalities who represent the Vedas and they also desire to become gopis. And in order to become Gopis, they took birth in the family of gopis and became, they took their birth and actually became gopis and then that, this way they were able to take part in Rasa Leela. So, this Madhaji's name is Shruti Rupa, and Rupa means the form, the form of the Shruti, the form of the Vedas, or the form of the hearing process. Sibao, Ming Bai Ma. Ta Hui Dan La Ma. Sibao. 
Well, there are many scriptures. It depends what scriptures you're following. There are scriptures for people in the mode of goodness and for the mode of passion and for the mode of ignorance. And there are scriptures for those who want pure devotion. You read the Bhagavad Gita, you can read chapter 16, Divine and Demoniac Qualities. So Krishna describes the qualities of those who are devotees, those who are divine, and then he describes the qualities of those who are demoniac. So you read these books, you'll get everything there. You have to cultivate the mode of goodness. The devotee wants to cultivate the mode of goodness. You have to read the Bhagavad Gita describes the mode of goodness, chapter 16. You read? Or you read chapter 14, the three modes of nature, and understand about the mode of goodness and the qualities one in the mode of goodness. Okay. Of devotional service. 
Yes, you should think Krishna's, everything is Krishna's arrangement. Krishna knows what's good for you. So Krishna wants you to develop your devotion. He's not so much worried about anything about the material problems. The material things will come according to your karma. But your devotion, that is a different thing. That's not depending on karma. Depends on your own desire to develop that devotion. So you next. Yes. The next one's from Braja Rani. Braja Rani Devadasi. Dimbai Guru Day the Yamasu Gan to Chi Ling Hun Shi Bush Tungo Tingwa the Chungu Zai Yi Tung Yung Wang Shanzo. Tish Swangu Fang Guang Yu Delta at the Basia. Is that the soul through the degree of purification, the soul is going upward one level by the other level. Even if the soul has penetrated Brahma Jyoti, there is still danger of falling down. Yes. Even, even you go up to the Brahma Jyoti. You go up to the Brahma Jyoti, you're not situated in devotional service. So it means your intelligence is not yet fully purified, so you can fall down. You go to the Brahma Jyoti, there's no engagement, there's no activity, so you become bored there, so you'll come back to the material world. There has to, there has to be proper engagement for the, the person. Be situated to be firmly situated, there has to be proper engagement, otherwise, we will always be moving. Yes, we're hearing about this in the in the Brihad Bhagavad. It's describing Gopkumar. He's there in Vaikuntha. From Vaikuntha, he went to Dwarka. We're going to hear how he goes to Goloka. Yes, 
格洛呃格帕库马，他出呃身处在白昆的，然后之后呢，他又去了格多尔帕，进而进一步，他去了。Just simply by the living entity's desire, he can go there. Narada Muni is telling him about somewhere beyond. Narada Muni is telling he's saying go to he was saying go to Purushottam Shetra, and then he's also he's going to say go to Goloka. Until we find the place where we're meant to be, we won't stay there. We have to find the place where we belong, where we're properly situated. Then we want to stay there. Yeah. Uh, the next one, or, or I do you want to further explain this question? No, next one. Uh, Rajendra, 下一个地球上的文达文和马普赛的运势都有对应的地方。那么扎根库瑞在灵异世界也是文达文。刚才听到扎根纳的也住在白昆达两个地方了吗 ？So, 文达文 and 马普 in the earthly planet have Corresponding place in the spiritual world, then Jagannathpuri in the spiritual world, Jagannathpuri is also Vrindavan. Just now I heard that Jagannath lives in Vaikuntha. Is he living in two places? Uh. The, we said there's a there's a Jagannath Puri on Earth and there's a Jagannath Puri in the spiritual world and in, in, in the spiritual world that Jagannath Puri is it's there on the Vaikuntha on the on the level of Vaikuntha it's like an extension of Vaikuntha just like Dwarka was the extension of Vaikuntha Jagannath Puri is also there it's a, like a, it's a part of Vaikuntha but at the same time separate from it We heard when Gokumar came to Vaikuntha, first he was in Vaikuntha, and then he went to Mathura, and then he went to Dwarka. And there also Ayodhya, he went to Ayodhya. So all of these places are there. They're 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 not they're not on Goloka. So they're part more in the part of Vaikuntha in the realm of Vaikuntha. But at the same time, they're special places in Vaikuntha. So 
So Lord Jagannath is there. He's there on earth and he's also there in the spiritual world. Yes, well, we heard that there are special dealings which Lord Krishna has with his devotees, which are unique. They're only with Krishna when he's in Vrindavan. And Krishna in other places, although Krishna in Jagannath Puri is the same as Krishna in Vrindavan, but not everybody gets to enjoy the intimacy with Lord, with Lord Jagannath as like Krishna does with the cowherd boys in Vrindavan. For example, you don't see Krishna dance, you don't see Lord Jagannath dancing Rasa Leela. And you, you don't see Lord Jagannath fighting with all the cowherd boys and wrestling and, uh, being, and carrying them on his back or being carried on the back of the cowherd boy. So, so the Lord Krishna and Lord Jagannath are the same, but at the same time there are some differences, special differences. Oh yeah, we heard when Gopkumar was in Jagannath Puri, he'd actually become the king of Puri. He'd become the king and he was doing the different services for Lord Jagannath. But still, there were some things he didn't get to get in. The, he was not allowed to take part in all, all of the activities. <laughs> He, he liked to Lord Jagannath, he, he was devoted to Lord Jagannath and he enjoyed, but still there, there was something, it wasn't just quite like Vrindavan. There were some special things missing. Okay. Yeah. Causeless mercy. Prabhupada said, just like somebody comes and gives you, eat by one, all right, I'll give you one million. And you never saw them before. And suddenly they just come and they want to give you, eat by one yuan. So that is causeless mercy. Somebody comes and they want to give you Krishna consciousness. You know, they say, here, take it. You have no qualification, but they want to give you. 
So that is causeless mercy. They give us something, the most valuable thing. We have no qualification, but they want to give it to us. Are you going to take it? Next question. Uh, next, still found is 淡然一笑。学习门徒课程和不教放歌的正确动机和心态是什么？只想毕业，得到证书，好得到启迪，可以吗？ What was the right motive and mood to learn the disciple course and Bhagavad Gita? Is that only for the purpose of graduation and get certification so that to be initiated? Is that all right? Well, that's part of it. But. We should study the disciple course, we will learn more about the society, we will learn more about the Krishna consciousness movement, and we will understand more about how we can be involved in Krishna consciousness. Becoming a member, becoming a devotee, they will want to know what are we becoming part of, what is, it, what is this organization, what is their goal, what are we trying to achieve, and how is it arranged, how is it organized. Spontaneous service, the mood of spontaneous service is that one naturally, without hesitation, is eager for Krishna conscious activities and naturally thinks of Krishna all the time. Just like in the beginning, you know, we may not like to wake up in the morning, we don't like to wake up early and, we, you know, the alarm clock goes off and we think, oh no, I don't want to, get, you know, in the beginning we're not very enthusiastic and we need a lot of things to help us and encourage us. But when one is on spontaneous devotion, then one will wake up even without the alarm clock, and one is so eager, and one doesn't care, oh, there's no hot water, he doesn't care, he'll take a bath even though there's freezing cold water, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you. 
这些外在的事物来鼓励我们，我们根本就没有这个热情。但是，一但是自发的早起呢，就是我们根本用不着闹钟，我们也不需要呃用热水，即使是很冰冷的水，我们也会去沐浴。And one is very enthusiastic to introduce Prabhupada's books and to distribute Prabhupada's books everywhere to everyone. And wherever they go, they always carry some of Prabhupada's books and they will try to give them out and distribute books to people. So that is like Raganuga Bhakti. She's what? Well, the important activity is to have some regular spiritual practice. As you say, you're chanting 16 rounds. So you want to do your chanting in the morning before you begin work. Before you go to work, ideally you want to spend some time chanting and remembering Krishna and worshipping Krishna. And then in the evening again, you want to also have a little time to chant and to read and to bring your consciousness more into Krishna, into the devotional line. And when you eat, you want to have food which is offered to Krishna, ideally. If you can cook at home, that's very good. Then you can take it with you to work. You can eat your prasadam at work. So if you follow like this, it becomes a habit, then you will gradually feel uh, relief from material desires. Uh, 
惯，您就会感觉到，就物质欲望就一点点的就消退了。You should become less passionate and less influ less、uh, angry. You shouldn't get angry easily. You should be peaceful and calm. 您的发展起来，嗯。When you're working, Krishna doesn't tell Arjuna to stop work. It's, it's you know, it's not not working is not a problem. But when you're working, you want to remember Krishna. 想起您在书上读到的有关 Krishna 的事情，或者是在课程当中听到的有关 Krishna 的事情。We have to use our mind to remember Krishna. 我们用我们的心意来恒常想着 Krishna. When we're thinking of Krishna, then we cannot be thinking about Maya. 
So you see in Prabhupada's purport, sometimes Prabhupada will say, there is Vedic evidence, and he will quote from one of the Upanishads, because the Upanishads come from the Vedas. Okay, Shai Gavanti. of who? Children, children's marriage. Oh. If I pray to Krishna, are there any influence to my spiritual progress? Well, no, it's nice to, it's good you pray to Krishna, yeah? You want to get the, your children married? Very nice. You can pray to Krishna like that. It's not pure devotion. But it's devotion. It's just devotion with your material desire. Because you're praying to Krishna, they will purify you gradually. Well, it's not just the mechanics of chanting. There has to be the chanting with pure devotion. There has to, you have to avoid the offences in the chanting. It's not just chanting 30 rounds, but there has to be quality in the chanting. Prabhupada said it took him 32 years to perfect his chanting. So, so Prabhupada was telling us, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to be, happen quickly. It's going to take time. You have to really want to chant with love. You have to really endeavor to control the mind. And if we chant with offence, 
then we will never get love of Godhead, which is the ultimate goal of the chanting. You may chant for many lifetimes, but you'll never get love of God unless you stop, unless you give up their fancies. Both. You have to do both. You have to follow the rules and regulations. You have to do everything. You use your alarm clock and wake up, and you do. All, and you have to also try to think of Krishna and pray to Krishna to give you that spontaneous love. So both have to be there. Both your your practice and your desire. You want something, you have to be able to cry for it. You have to really want to shed tears to get it. You want it so badly. Okay, Naradi, the, the, the name Naradi means, uh, it's the name of Narada Muni. Narada Muni wanted to, be, to go to Rasalila, so he took a bath in the kund and he became a gopi. He came out of the bath after taking bath, he had the form of a gopi. His body had changed, he'd given up the male body and became a, 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 a female. And he got the name Naradi, Naradi Gopi. So it's the name of Narada Muni when he's a gopi and it's Naradi, he went, you know, he could go to Rasa Lila and take part in Krishna's Rasa Lila. So that's the meaning. Narada, Narada means one who gives Narayan. Narayan, Lord Narayan, Narada gives. Narada Muni is always going everywhere giving people Lord Narayan. He chants the name Narayan. 
it gives people the the holy name of Lord Narayan. So Naradi is the female form of Narada. Oh, okay, so you can distribute Prabhupada's books. If you can introduce Krishna consciousness to some people or if you can distribute a book to some people, it's very nice, very pleasing. We encourage you, you try to distribute some of the books. Give people a book about Krishna, let them read, hear about Krishna. The more you give the mercy, the more you get the mercy yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>